Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ben and today is just going to be a quick video where I'm going to share with you my custom macros that I've made for Affinity Photo, show you how I use them for pretty much all of my work and of course let you guys have them. So if you check the description down below, you'll see a download link where you can download these three custom macros I've created. And in this video, I just want to show you how they work and how I use them in my workflows. Okay guys, so if you haven't already installed the macros, they are pretty easy to install. Uh, once you download them, you should just be able to double click on them here and Affinity Photo will just open them up automatically and it should open it in this library window. Now, if you don't have the library window, you can go over to window and make sure that library is checked and you should get this little library tab. It might be it might come out separate like this or it might be somewhere else. I just have mine attached over here. You can also import these manually in Affinity Photo if you were to just have the library window selected and you can select this pull down menu to import macros. Now I did test these macros both on Affinity Photo version one and two and they both work. So you should be good depending on no matter what version of Affinity Photo you are running. Okay. So with all that out the way, let's go ahead and talk about what these actually do. So if you were to open up the retouching one, you will see that there is a retouching suite, dodge and burn two, and a 2.5 frequent separation macro in here. And they're all pretty much self-explanatory. So once you click on one, you should see a cleanup step, a dodge and burn, helpers, and contouring. And these are four layers that I pretty much use in every single one of my retouches. And they all pretty much do exactly what they sound like. So the cleanup layer is where I do a lot of my basic cleanup, usually cleanups with the background, uh, stray hairs, little like pimples or weird shadows, things like that. So actually this image you're seeing here has already been retouched. Let me go ahead and open it up and show you what I've done. So for example, let me go ahead and just turn uh, everything off really quickly. Okay. And you'll see here on my cleanup step, what I did is I cleaned up a lot of this background. I also took out some of the wrinkles in the pants just to make them look a little nicer and a little bit neater and i probably got rid of a few like stray hairs you can see here and i also got kind of this weird like lighting shadow that on her neck that i didn't really like so i just went ahead and got rid of it and so that's all my cleanup step does is just ready to go to clean stuff up now after that you will see there is a dodge and burn layer what's well, actually a group if we open it up you're going to see a dodge and a burn and these are two curve adjustment layers set for curves and set for dodge. So that way, all you have to do is let's go ahead and grab a white paintbrush. I'm going to go ahead and make it a full size brush or so you can see what I'm doing. And once you start painting in white, you are going to dodge. And if we go to burn, you are going to burn. And so you can see there if I go back to my old image. You can see I did a lot of dodging and burning on the face just to kind of clean up some of those odd shadows. I also, you can also see on the shirt here, uh, you could kind of see like the, I guess the top she was wearing underneath. So by using dodge and burn, I was able to get rid of those shadows. And if you notice there's a helper layer above that, all that's going to do is turn the image black and white just because it's usually a little bit easier to dodge and burn when you don't have to worry about color and you're just looking at the actual tonal values. And if you open up the helpers layer, you will see there's a contrast helper. So sometimes depending on the image, I want to have more contrast to help me identify like some of the parts that need to be dodged and burned, but we are done with that. So let's go ahead and come back out. Okay. So after you've done your cleanup, dodge and burn helper, now we have contouring contouring again, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to get two new dodge and burn layers. And these are mainly designed to be used for contouring. So if I turn these on and off, you can kind of see, I just use these to kind of add a little bit more depth in the image. You can see like, I kind of like brought out some of the depth in her face, kind of giving her face a bit more three dimensionality also in the chest area and maybe a little bit in the pant leg and stuff, just adding some highlights just to kind of create some more depth and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. And then if I think you'll also notice that one of these, the burn layer is set to luminosity. Uh, you can have that set to anything you want, but I have it set to luminosity because sometimes when you're doing a lot of burning, 
it can actually kind of saturate the image more. And so just to prevent that, I have it set to luminosity. But usually at this level, you're not going to see too much saturation difference. If you start coming down to really bringing it down here, you can see, let me go ahead and bring it to normal here. For example, this is an extreme example. Oops, let's go the other way. But you can see here where I dodge on her cheek became a lot more saturated, where if I have it set to luminosity, uh, it doesn't really saturate. So that's normal. And look at the redness on her cheek and then have it down to here. You just don't get that much saturation. But again, at this level, you're really not going to notice that much of a difference. But I just do it just in case. And there are a few instances where if it's already a very saturated area and they start dodging it, sorry, I'm sorry, burning it, uh, it becomes more saturated. And usually I don't want that. So anyways, but you can switch that back however you want. All right. So we've got retouching these three layers. Again, there's nothing magical happening here. It's just basically I can click on one thing and all my layers are already up, set and ready to go. All right, the next one is basically self-explanatory. It's dodge and burn two. This is just for those times when your initial dodge and burn is not enough and you want another dodge and burn layer. Click on that and you're gonna get new dodge and burn layers. Dodge and burn two, dodge, burn, ready to go, easy. Now the last one is frequency separation. So I've talked about this in other videos, but this is basically if you want to do frequency separation. Now in order for this to work, you have to be doing it on an actual full pixel layer. So you might want to come over and go to where I'm at, to layer and maybe merge visible. Then once you have a full layer here, then you can click on the 2.5 frequency separation and you'll see what it does. It creates a low frequency layer, a high frequency layer that's already been turned off and a pixel layer in between because this is where you would do a lot of your retouching. Let's say for example, I wanted to get rid of this like dark cheek area on that little pixel layer, I could grab a brush and maybe just hold down option, get this color. And let's go ahead and do a low flow brush here. And then I can just kind of paint that out. Now, the reason why I have the high frequency layer off, it's just more of a preference. It's just easier for me to see exactly what I can have an effect on. When you have the high frequency layer on, you might be trying to erase something that's on the high frequency layer where here I can see what I can and can't affect. And so just by painting that really quickly, this is just a really quick and dirty edit here, but you can see that I just took that away and I've still retained a lot of that detail. The reason why I chose 2.5 is just because for most of my portraits, uh, with my camera and my megapixel count, 2.5 is a good balance where I still keep a lot of that fine detail, but I can still get underneath it and do some editing. Alrighty, so that covers my retouching suite. Okay, so next you will see that we have a color grading tab and there's only two in there. If you watch my last video I made about color grading and my favorite color grading tools, you're gonna know what's coming. If you click on this, you will see a uh, little group called color grading. And when you open it up, you will have HSL, selective color, color balance, and curves. Again, all these macros are mainly just to speed up my workflow. So I'm not having to do these steps manually. Uh, so if you haven't watched my video on color grading, go ahead and watch that one because there I explain exactly how I use all of these tools more in depth. And then after that, I have another one called fill layer soft light. And let me go ahead and grab that top layer. And you click on that, it's gonna create a fill layer set to soft light now because of the color in this image is not too noticeable let me go let me do another image here so for example this one if i click on that fill layer soft light you're going to see it adds a little bit of a brown tint now the cool thing is once you have this fill layer selected you can go over to your move tool and then you can use your hsl or your color wheel to basically change it to any color you want it's already set to 30 percent but you can of course change that, increase the saturation, uh, move it up. You can even change the blend mode if you want. It's just for, I found that for uh, my kind of work, I like to have colors at a soft light, maybe a low saturation, somewhere around 30%. And then that just gives a little hint of color, usually things like tan, red, maybe blue if you want to do a cool kind of look or something like that. So that's again, it's nothing that you can't do on your own. It's just basically a one click and I'm already set and ready to go. Okay, now the last one is basically resizing. 
And this one should be familiar if you watch my previous video where I talk about my Instagram settings uh, when I export Instagram in Affinity Photo. So here you're gonna see I have Instagram portrait and Instagram portrait by cubic. So what does that mean? If you didn't watch my last video, I'll do a quick explanation. But for example, if I go ahead and do this and I do this Instagram portrait, what it does is it automatically resizes it for Instagram. Now, sometimes, especially in this image here, you can see we have a problem with a lot of more where a lot of this more is coming in because of it was actually a lot of fine detail uh, in this shirt. So I've often found that if you do a bicubic adjustment, you can see there uh, it got rid of well. It got rid of a lot of that more way. Right now I have my screen set to a lower resolution so it looks good on YouTube, but normally you don't get any kind of more on this here, but you can see here there's no more, where if I did that previous one, you know, there's a lot more more. So again, this is gonna be image dependent. So if you're doing a export to Instagram at a portrait size and you're getting this more, try the bicubic, that might work. The rest of them are already set to landscape mode, three by two, and Instagram are square mode. So just make sure you're using the right aspect ratio when you are doing these macros, because for example, if you hit square on this, it's just gonna make the image turn square and it's gonna stretch things out. Or if you do something, let me go, if you do something like Insta, like landscape, you know, we have a landscape mode, but it's looking weird. So it's, these macros are expecting to have these uh, ratios when you use them so that they look appropriate uh, for your uh, export. Okay guys, so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find these macros useful. I hope they help you speed up your workflow and uh, yeah, drop a comment. Let me, I'd love to know what you think about them and maybe you have some ideas that I could make them better. That would be cool or I'd love to hear your macros. So uh, anyways, that's all for today guys and I will see you in the next video. Peace.